Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our national webinar on chemistry in everyday life, organized by Biologic Academic Platform. This webinar targets students, teachers, and faculties from various disciplines and a number of states across India as audience. It is my pleasure to inform you that Biologic considers each and every participant as its extended family member. Biologic is a virtual academic platform that brings students and educators across the world under common academic interest. We always encourage our members to share knowledge and exchange ideas where your active and spontaneous partaking is highly solicited. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Shundeep Pal, Assistant Professor of Zoology, Barakpur Rashtraguru Shurendranath College, and the founder and admin of Biologic, to introduce today's invited guest speaker. Over to Dr. Pal. Uh, thank you so much, Atre, for uh, setting the event in motion. I would like to welcome all the participants in this national webinar on chemistry in everyday life. We are actually overwhelmed by the responses we have received. There are 200, 250 plus participants, and they are from uh, almost 30 disciplines and from 20 states of India. This is also to mention that there are three international participants from Morocco, Iraq, and UAE. So thank you so much for your interest. And without wasting much time, I am introducing today's invited speaker, Dr. Prashant S. Adargatti. So let me introduce Dr. Prashant. After finishing BSc in 2010, he pursued MSc from PC Jabin Science College, Hubali. He did his PhD from Bangalore University and postdoctoral research in Indian Institute of Science. He served as lecturer in PG Department of Chemistry, PC Jabin Science College, Hubali. He is having an outstanding research and academic career. He published research papers in reputed national and international journals, the 42 international journals and 10 book chapters. He is acting as a referee for international peer-reviewed journals in many journals like RSC Analytical Methods, RSC Analyst, Chemical Engineering Journal, Materials Letters, etc. He's an editorial board member of Materials, Physics and Chemistry, Analytical Chemistry International. He is having lots of awards and recognitions, including outstanding reviewer for analytical methods, chemical engineering journal, and materials letters. He is the member of Royal, Royal Society of Chemistry, that is MRSC, which is a prestigious award, only the, uh, on the only person selected from India across the globe, whereas uh, 11 persons are selected um, from different parts of the world. He is the international young scientist, he received international young scientist award in 2000, 21, along with International Scientist Award. He is the BOS member of PG Department of Chemistry, PC Jabin Science College, and international collaboration with Manchester Metropolitan University, England, UK. He is presently working as an assistant professor of chemistry in SVM Arts, Science, and Commerce College, Ilkal. 
Karnataka. So this is the right profile of uh, Dr. Prashant Adarkatti. So now over to the invited speaker. <clears throat> Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sandeep Paul, sir. You have uh, nicely you know, introduced me. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts in this platform. Uh, now I would like to start uh, with my actual topic of today's talk. <clears throat> Liz, if you can see, can you see the screen? Yeah. Paul, sir? Yeah, your screen is uh, presented. Thank you. Find them. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, good morning to one and all. So today's my. Uh, I'm going to give a present on a uh, talk on the chemistry in everyday life. Uh, the first question uh, which comes, you know, what exactly chemistry? Uh, I, I will be, you know, talking uh, about uh, the chemistry uh, which are uh, day to day uh, life uh, we are, uh, you know, come across or we'll be using all and uh, everything, but we'll be not knowing that uh, which one is uh, uh, exactly of chemistry and uh, how the things we, we are really unaware about uh, these things but if uh, today's main talk will be depending on the things which you are using in day-to-day -day life and that will be composed of various chemicals and their chemical reactions and etc so before going to start of the fundamental thing i would like to a few, share a few points about uh, the basic uh, parts of an you know a smallest particle you know you take any of the smallest particles that we are going to call it as you know atom so atom is nothing but what atom is the one which contains the three components like that is one is neutron a proton as well as electron if you talk about neutrons it is a negatively uh, it is a neutral part as well as proton it contains the positively charged species whereas electron is a negatively charged species we can find the presence of protons and neutrons within this nucleus whereas electrons present in the orbitals hope you can see this image and apart from that chemistry is not only about uh, pertaining to a b or any s tubes any solutions like that it's all about the one uh, which contains the various parts you know say for example if i really want to talk about what exactly chemistry the study of compositions structure properties and reactions of matter essentially of atomic and molecular system so this is what actually i can give a definition on chemistry at the same time there are two things we need to understand one is matter and the other is <clears throat> mass so ma matter is nothing but what you know you take anything the mass that occupies space that is what matter we, we can call it as all consist of this atom so again, atom consists of these three components. This is the fundamental part of you know uh, matter. Again, if you talk about mass versus weight, so one may ask question that what exactly the mass like that. So the mass is nothing but what the amount of measured in international standard units measured on a kg scale. This does not change with the force of gravity. Whereas weight is nothing but a measurement as a result of gravity. This does change with the force of gravity. So this is a brief introduction about chemistry, like what exactly chemistry and how we are going to uh, define the chemistry like that. And now I will come to the part that where we can find this chemistry. I will not go beyond any of the out of the box, but I will be coming within the box that is, if we are taking about uh, in day to day life, where exactly we are using and how we are using, uh, we all will come to know that uh, in this uh, present talk. If you really talk about, you know, <clears throat> Why chemistry is so important and why do we study chemistry and what is the role of chemistry in life? If we answer all those questions, we ourselves we are going to appreciate the subject that we are in day-to-day -day life, we are utilizing those things. So we are all made up of chemicals and everything around us is made up of chemicals. So everything we hear, see, smell, etc. involve chemistry and chemicals. That is what matter. Again, if you are you know, hearing, seeing, tasting and touching all involve intricate series of chemical reactions and interactions in our body many of the changes we observe in the world around are caused by chemical reactions i will give a brief you know explanation as well as examples in the upcoming slides so chemistry is not limited to beakers as well as laboratory 
again it is all around us and the better we know chemistry the better we know our world so at last we can call it as chemistry is present in every aspect of life sorry <clears throat> for this i will coming to the human body only itself i will not go you know taking examples you know which is not really uh, we are unaware about these things but i will be giving examples in such a way that it will be we are all human body is made up of elements elements are coming within the part of chemistry itself you know most of the human body is made up of water with the cells consisting of 60 to 70 percent water by which again 99 percent of the mass of the human body is made up of mainly six elements what are those elements the first one is very oxygen carbon hydrogen nitrogen calcium and phosphorus so these are the elements which are present in the human body and this is comes under the category of chemistry itself so now we can really appreciate that we are uh, we are uh, you know made up of uh, chemical components chemical chemical elements as well as uh, some of the reactions which is going to take place that is all about chemistry hope now i have uh, clarified the you know doubt which we really have on uh, the so you now few people think about chemistry is a very vast subject chemistry is a very complicated subject like that but nobody is no you know know that exactly that we are utilizing and we are having all those things inside our human body but we are unaware like we are not appreciating those things so once if we understand these things we can really appreciate the things that uh, the chemistry we do uh, use in a day to day life so this is all about the elements which are present in the human body in a major uh, constituents apart from this various uh, elements like you know oxygen carbon hydrogen nitrogen calcium phosphorus potassium sulfur sodium etc which are present in the body in various percentage and each does their own activity but without these elements say for example without oxygen you know human or uh, human being can't you know survive oxygen is must as well as uh, you know <clears throat> if our bone has to be very stiff and very strong calcium is much needed you know so few examples i'm giving over here again uh, if you're taking about the chlorine in order to clean water in order to uh, remove the contaminants from the hard water or any potable water chlorine we used to put in a chlorine because to once if we add chlorine it will become potable water so like that all the elements we are using in day to day life so <clears throat> again if you talk about examples so i told in previous slide chemistry around the house now i will start from the house itself i will not be taking any you know some other examples which we are really not heard about those things but the thing which we are using in day to day life since morning to till night what all things we are using by taking those examples only i am exploring the chemistry as well as the components which are present in the in our uh, day to day life used materials or any utensils first thing is if you are taking examples of toothpaste of course any persons or anyone who used to you know wake up in the morning the first go to the bathroom and they will be doing uh, such kind of stuffs like you know taking the brush and they are going to start you know brushing you know they are going to start brushing if you are taking uh, making all those things we are using uh, toothpaste again toothpaste contains it's a mixture of fluoride peroxide and baking soda so these are the th the chemical components which are present in the toothpaste again definitely we are using this all mugs as well as any uh, buckets and all those things which are made up of plastics but plastics are really made up of polymers polymers are nothing but what you know polyvinyl uh, pvc polyvinyl chloride these are the various polymers these are the chemical components which can be utilized for the making of these plastics and one more thing if you are taking the what you know this brush uh, bushes like you know uh, you brush containing some of the bushes like this these are made up of what nylon again nylon is nothing but what is made up of uh, chemical components so these are the various things we can easily see in our uh, uh, toothpaste as well as in brushes again once if we do the making all those stuffs we used to have coffee what exactly what is the role of coffee definitely uh, one or the other person will be using this coffee because in very in uh, <clears throat> a rainy season now it's a rainy season I, i think nobody is going to miss coffee or tea 
but this really makes us or keeps us awake how does it really affect to our human body if you are talking about this thing see it contains adenosine the chemical called adenosine it will be containing by the coffee uh, in our brain and it binds to certain receptors and show the nerve cell activity when sleep is signal so this is how once if you take the coffee and you know because of presence of chemical called adenosine in our brain it is going to uh, make some reactions and it makes us you know keeps away so this is the chemistry behind this taking coffee or tea in a, when we really feel stressed or or uh, not you know in a waking mode so next is of course we all know that onion you know if you're taking onion as soon as uh, we start to chop this onion what happens uh, our eyes becomes becomes you know watery you know some watery kind of things comes from our eyes what is the main reason for that one if you are looking the main reason for this uh, why this as soon as we chop the onion why does uh, uh, you know it's uh, filled with water if you are thinking about these things means uh, the onion will be containing sulfur compound in that as soon as we chop that uh, onion the sulfur component or sulfur chemical which is present in the onion that will be reacting with the vapors or moisture which is present in the atmosphere and thereby it is going to form as a sulfuric acid h2so4 it is a strong acid so as soon as uh, it is going to contact with the eyes what happens some itchy kind of things is going to we we, we feel ourselves itchy kind of things that is what irritant uh, feeling we can feel so this is the reason because of the presence of sulfur in uh, onion it is going to form as sulfuric acid by reacting with the by reacting with the uh, moisture and thereby it is going to form as a sulfuric acid and once if it uh, contacts to our eyes it is you know something like tears is going to come from the eyes this is the main reason behind uh, this onion so once again we should appreciate that the presence of sulfur which is present in the onion yeah again once if we prepare all those things you know for breakfast all those things will be making uh, you know onion we are going to uh, chop then we are you going to use uh, chilies and blah blah various things we are going to use and once if we want to prepare some rice definitely in this era nobody is going to away from this uh, pressure cooker and the advantage of using this pressure cooker what happens once if we put the rice inside this uh, pressure cooker pressure is going to get get start as soon as we are improving or increasing the you know temperature the pressure is going to start inside this pressure cooker because of in order to not escaping uh, the vapors which is present in the um, where in a cooker all the uh, vapors which is going to reside in the cooker itself so thereby the steam because of the presence of steam uh, the things or uh, foodable item which is rice which is present in the cooker it is going to get start you know cooked faster so this is the main reason how exactly the cooking can get faster while using your pressure cooker so this is also one thing and you may ask where exactly the chemistry you know present over here the rate of reactions exactly becomes is here is more means here temperature acts as a catalyst so this is the beauty of chemistry in pressure cooker we can observe again salt of course if salt is not there in appropriate amount uh, our tongue is uh, to look into the way exactly the salt is there because without the salt uh, the tongue is not going to satisfy because in tongue uh, we can find the presence of uh, taste buds the taste buds will be received uh, some chemical compounds which will make uh, very tasty or non tasty like that but if you are if you are using this uh, chemical compound that is salt it contains what sodium chloride so this is what we can call it as table salt so here also we can find the presence of uh, chemical compound or elements that is sodium as well as chloride or chlorine so this is all about you know few examples which we really using in our day to day life again if you are taking examples of vegetables see the various colors of the vegetables you take a tomato you take a carrot then onion they all possessing unique colors where 
where does these colors come from? How exactly these things, uh, who has given these colors to these various vegetables? The questions comes, right? If you look into the, the questions, if you ask how exactly this color has come from to the various vegetables, we can find the presence of chemical which is present in the all the vegetables that is carotenoids. Because of the presence of carotenoids, the color is going to get induced in various vegetables. If I really want to explain about this carotenoids, about uh, how exactly carotenoids works, means compounds have an area called chromophore which absorbs and gives off particular wavelengths of light, generating the color that we then perceive. So this is where the importance of chemistry can be revealed. So now we all can appreciate that presence of a chemical compound that is carotenoid, call it as one's name chromophore. So that's the main reason why vegetable is going to show their own unique colors. Again, if you really want to see that where do you find chemistry in our daily life means where not. My question is that we, we are not away from chemistry because whatever you use, whatever you take you know, from clothing, from food, from pen, pencil, laptops, everything, everywhere we can find the presence of chemistry. Few examples I have mentioned over here that is one is paper, paper, you may ask question where we can find chemistry in paper. Paper is made up of cellulose. Again, it uh, comes under the category of it will be containing carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Again, plastics as already given in the in the previous slide that is polyvinyl chloride. Again, cloths. Here we are using various dyes molecules. Means whatever uh, we you know take the cloths that will be containing water, various colors. That colors has been given by dyes. Some particular chemical compounds will be there. As soon as we put those dyes to the cloths that will be you know, showing various colors there also we can find the presence of chemistry again cooking food yeah soap batteries petrol concrete pills everywhere we can find the presence of chemistry and for interesting i can i may give uh, most of the undergraduate students will be not aware about where exactly the presence of chemistry we can find in the batteries Batteries are nothing but if you are taking mobile batteries or laptop batteries, it is made up of lithium ion batteries. So lithium is, a, as we know that it is an element which is present in the periodic table. And if I want to talk about only batteries, of course, uh, you know, I can take another one or two or about the only batteries because I used to do research on batteries as well. Anyhow, so these are the various applications of chemistry we can find in our day-to-day uh, -day life. Again. In our chemicals of food in day life, say for example, uh, we, we, we can uh, see the things like, you know, if you are, uh, we, we can come across coloring agents, artificial preservatives, artificial sweetness, antioxidants, minerals, as well as vitamins. So in food, various materials we can uh, find as well as the chemicals are widely used. These are the various chemicals uh, we are using in the food. Let me explain one by one. Example, if I take about any citrus foods, like that is it will be containing citric acid. As well, if you take any cake or any something, bakery items, they will be using food coloring. And if you're taking some flavor enhancer in order to enhance the taste of any of the particular food, we will be using flavor enhancer. Again, we are using artificial sweetener in order to increase the sweetness of any of the sweets. Uh, the, you know, we are going to use a sweetener. Again, preservatives in order to prevent the decaying of or uh, wasting of the, any particular uh, food, we are using preservatives. So these are the various chemicals we are using in our day-to-day -day life, you know, food. Again, if you are talking about uh, food additives, you know, about chemistry in food, food additives are the substances added to food to preserve flavor or improve its taste and appearance. I think... Uh, these are the things definitely everybody has you know seen these things i don't know uh, gems all those things so they are all will be having different colors but uh, these are the uh, very toxic to the human uh, body because the, all the things which has uh, you know they are going to put a coloring agents so thereby various colors we can see over here but uh, this is very hazardous to the human body yeah one more example i can give that is artificial preservatives 
these prevent spoilage of food by stopping the growth of microorganisms for example sodium benzoate sodium meta bisulfite especially these artificial preservatives we can use in the hotels as well as in bakeries again artificial sweetness again in bakeries we are going to use this uh, artificial sweetness only uh, for namely i can give two examples aspartame as well as allitame so these are the two artificial sweetener chemicals we are going to use to enhance the sweetness of the particular food say for example allitamate if you take the exa example of uh, allitamate chemical compound it is 2000 times sweeter than sucrose see so that's the reason why usually bakery or any of the commercial people used to use these artificial sweeteners to the food items again antioxidants these prevent the spoilage of food by preventing the oxidation of food for example butylated hydroxyl tolerance as well as butylated hydroxyl anisole i can give one best example for this one as soon as we chop or we cut the apple if you keep for some time for two minutes or three minutes immediately it is going to change its color from white to brown color because of the oxidation we can find the change in color of that apple so this is how in various foods we can find the same thing so that's why in order to prevent those things we are using these two antioxidant chemicals to prevent the spoilage of food that is compounds that are used in impart color to the various substrate including paper leather fair then hair drugs cosmetics so these are the various artificial chemical compounds we are using in foods but at the same time we should know that these are very hazardous to the human body because that leads to various uh, side effects like you know central nervous system is going to get damaged sometimes liver is going to get damaged like that next <clears throat> Again, if you're talking about saccharin, so these are the various chemicals, as I told in the previous slide here, artificial sweeteners. So these are the, you know, examples for saccharin as well as, you know, aspartame. Aspartame is the one we are using artificial uh, sweetener. So this is the chemical structure of the aspartame. It is methyl ester of dipeptide formed from aspartic acid and phenyl aniline. So this is what this is. Phenyl, this is phenyl alanine and this is aspartic acid and it is formed as a dipeptide. So COnH is bond is there. So this is what we can call it as a peptide bond or COnH like that. So this is a peptide bond. So this is the best example for the artificial sweetness that is aspartame. Again. If you talk about antioxidant, as I told you, in order to prevent the spoilage of food, we are using antioxidants. You know what happens? Oxidation of food, free radicals are generated as well as reacts with those. So thereby what happens? Stops further oxidation. If you are using antioxidants, there is no any further reactions. In order to prevent those reactions, we are using antioxidants. And this is one more example that is BHT butylated hydroxytoline. So this is the chemical structure of uh, butylated hydroxytoline. So these are the various chemical compounds we are using in food and moreover these are the various artificial chemicals which are using in food. One more example that is butylated hydroxy anisole. So this is the chemical structure of the butylated hydroxy anisole. So next. <clears throat> Another is chemistry of cleansing agents in everyday life. So far we have no talk about uh, chemical compounds which are present in food i now will see in the chemical compounds present in the cleansing agent say for example it will be containing soaps as well as detergents as we all know that soaps which are using in order to remove the dirt which is present on any particular substrate how exactly that soaps is going to get react or act on the particular substrate now let us see that one so soaps are sodium or potassium salt of higher carboxylic acid such as stearic acid, palmitic acid and volic acid whereas detergents contain long chain of alkyl groups. Detergents in comparison to soaps can also function in hard water. If you talk about hard water as well as soft water, 
in hard water you know what happens the froth is not going to occurs whereas in soft water we can find the presence of froth that definition or that explanation i will be giving in the next slide and one more process or one more mechanism we should know about saponification that is alkaline hydrolysis of triesters of glycerol to form soap is known as saponification so soaps do not function in hard water since they precipitate in it as i told you that they are not going to react in soft water whereas they are going to form as what precipitate somewhat some sticky sticky kind of things probably you people might have observed this thing when you are using borewell water when we are using soaps will be feeling or we we can feel that there is a formation of sticky kind of thing that is what we can call it as a precipitate now if you talk about types of soaps we can find uh, the various types of soaps that is toilet soaps floating soaps transparent soaps medicated soaps and laundry soaps if you talk about toilet soaps it will be containing potassium soaps or softer than sodium soaps as well as floating soaps contain this can be prepared by beading soap bubbles transparent soaps are the one this contains soap dissolved in excess of alcohol and it is evaporated then medicated soaps contain soaps by adding little amount of detol savlon etc and laundry soaps mainly contain sodium resonate and borax see these are the various chemical compounds which are present in the soaps and without soaps we are not doing anything so for example if you want to wash our hands we are using uh, savlon soaps or detol soaps or some other any soaps so here all we can find the presence of you know chemistry or chemical compounds so now hope i have clearly revealed the presence of chemical compounds or chemistry which we are daily using but we are really unaware about these things now i will give one more example <clears throat> that how exactly this soap works you know if you are taking soap molecules soap contains what one is hydrophobic end and another will be hydrophilic end soaps are generally sodium or potassium salts of long chain fatty acids soap molecules have a hydrophobic as well as hydrophilic part hydrophobic means water hating part whereas hydrophilic means which is water loving part while the hydrophilic part cling to the water when washing the hydrophobic end clings to the dirt particle thus when we pour away the water the dirt particles wash away with soap molecules hope now you can clearly appreciate how does really soap works to the dirt particles which is present in the cloths or any substrate in brief i can explain you the one which is present you know, like, uh, the dirt particle which are going to uh, you know uh, present with the hydrophobic part means which is water hating uh, substance as soon as we pour the water what happens the dirt is going to attach with this hydrophobic part as well as dirt as well as hydrophobic part will go away from any substrate or any cloths so thereby it is going along with the dirt particles which is present in the cloth or any substrate so this is how actually the soaps are going to work so now <clears throat> cosmetics this is very very important part because nobody is going to away from these cosmetics cosmetics not only includes only powders creams deodorants but also it contains some you know thickeners as well as some uh, sunburn uh, creams let me explain all those things uh, these are the various cosmetics uh, we can find the one is emulsifier this increases the stability of the emulsion for example potassium cetyl sulfate then again preservatives these are added to cosmetics to increase their shelf life for example benzyl alcohol salicylic acid then thickeners these given an appealing consistency for example cetyl alcohol as well as stearic acid then emollient then glimmer and shiners so these are the various chemicals we are going to use in cosmetics now i will give a particular examples of your cosmetics of course as soon as we take bath many people use this deodorants of course they are using mouthwash then shampoo in order to clean the hairs then we are using toothpaste then shaving cream as well as talcum powder these all personal care products contains the previously mentioned chemicals or chemical compounds of those things that is emulsifier preservatives etc 
now let us talk about the adverse effect or the presence of uh, chemistry in particular cosmetics so cosmetics are substances used to enhance the appearance or order of the human body the first example i have mentioned over here is a lipstick then nail polish then eyeliner so these are the various examples i can give of for cosmetics a subset of cosmetics is called makeup which we refers to the products intend to change the user's appearance so if one, one one has to enhance their appearance definitely one or the other person they are going to use these personal care products but at the same time we should know the adverse effects of this cosmetics too for example lipstick and lip balm contain oil beeswax perfumes these products soften and brighten the lips as well as this eyelasher as well as this nail polish but at the same time this lipstick contains a smaller amount of lead so lead is very much dangerous to the human body as soon as we consume you know if someone is using this lipstick obviously it is going to small you know very small amount is going to get inside into the body and they are going to accumulate in the liver so thereby what happens once the larger amount is going to get accumulated in the liver liver is going to get damaged because lead is a substance or a element which is very dangerous to human body similarly this uh, mascaras these are the various chemicals compounds also present in here then as well as this nail polish also especially nail polish is made up of what you know polymers as well as solvents and some colorants also will be there so these are the various uh, personal care products containing uh, chemical compounds again uh, sunscreen uh, the, of course in uh, summer season definitely we are going to use a sunblock or sunscreen how does it really works this sunblock or sunscreen there are two kinds of rays from the sun which is particularly bad for us that is ultraviolet rays a and ultraviolet rays b sunscreen it functions as screen and offers protection from sunburns which is caused by ultraviolet rays b whereas sunblock has more reflective nature and blocks both uva and uvb radiations as soon as we apply upon our screen what happens it reduces or it blocks the insertion of the very dangerous light rays that is uva and uvb to penetrate inside the skin so that's why one has to use the sunblock as well as sunscreen so these are the various you know personal care products in personal care products also we can find the presence of chemical compounds and the chemical reactions also we can appreciate again if you are taking a few examples you know cleaning agent like phenyl any of the things it will be containing uh, some example i can give the chemistry in household cleaning products affects our environment greatly for example a very common component is cleaning products that is chlorine chlorine has a gaseous element that can be lethal in large on it is into the atmosphere if you are using much more amount of this uh, cleansing agent what happens this is a dangerous to the environment because chlorine is not good for human health of course anything which is very in a minimum amount or minimum quantity is good for health but excess anything excess is very dangerous for human body as well as environmental too yeah these are the various uh, cleansing agents like phenyl various etc of course this all containing acid of course acid can irritate and injure the skin as well as eyes uh, these things probably you might have uh, i know uh, experienced especially in uh, cleaning some bathrooms uh, people used to use you know acids as soon as we enter the bathrooms what happens we feel ourselves very irritation is going to get starts to our skin as well as eyes because of the presence of acid so these are the various uh, chemical compounds which are present in the cleaning products too so till now i have been explained about uh, the chemistry or chemical compounds which are present in vegetables as well as food then personal care products then in various applications okay now i'm going to explain in uh, chemistry in everyday life which is really in a i'm going to talk about uh, medicine so so far we have seen in uh, food products as well as in cleansing agents now let us uh, give a brief look upon medicine too because you know if you are very fine that's okay uh, sometimes you know stomach is going to get upset sometimes we feel headache and sometimes uh, we will not feel very uh, happy or sometimes we feel depressed sometimes uh, we feel ourselves uh, not to mood in a good mood to work anything in order to prevent this 
these things in order to enhance these things what happens we should use medicines because food is properly we are uh, you know taking to the our uh, system everything will be very fine but something is going to be missing but definitely it is going to show its adverse effect but once again if it is showing adverse effect means definitely we should concern to the doctor definitely doctor is going to give some medicine but in medicines also we can find the presence of chemistry now let us uh, explain about chemical in medicine you know definitely if you feel any headache headache is a very common uh, phenomena or a common thing which we can uh, see in day to day life as soon as we feel headache uh, we used to take uh, something vix action fine diet or any something so, so many tablets are available in the market we all will be using that uh, chemicals or uh, tablets that uh, what happens you know chemistry department in hospital medical labs analyze blood urine for proteins sugars and other substances because this blood urine as well as protein sugars which will be contained this proteins as well as sugars will be accumulated in our body because of the the quality of the food we are taking if something is going to miss definitely we are going to you know uh, uh, feel you know adverse effects in order to prevent those things we take you know medicines in 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 the form of tablets or syrup or something other else again as soon as uh, if you visit the hospital definitely the people or uh, the concerned doctor they used to ask you to we used to or uh, we, we we want to analyze a blood report or a blood checking in blood of course everything will be determined because uh, we can find the presence of oxygen or we can find the presence of various nutrients by looking into the blood we can tell the quality of the food which we have taken in our day to day life now i'll be taking example of drugs what exactly the meaning of drug so drug is the substance which is used for the purpose of prevention diagnosis treatment or cure of a disease so the word derived from the french word that is drug meaning dry herb so from where this word has come from and if you want to talk about characteristic of an ideal drug it should not disturb normal physiological process and harmless to host but should destroy harmful organisms and it should minimum side effects as well as localized to affected site but majority of the drugs or majority of the tablets or any of the medicine we are taking they are not meeting these criteria because whatever we are taking uh, you know if we are taking tablet uh, they are going to of course along with the uh, affected side it is going to show some other adverse effects too that is side effect also it is going to show so that's why uh, not always uh, appreciate appreciable to take the tablets or any medicines for a very smaller any uh, fever or something like that again once if we take the drugs how exactly it is going to act with, within our body or human system now let us see that one so the catalytic actions of enzymes if we talk about uh, enzymes for understanding the interaction between the drug as well as enzyme it is important to know how do enzymes catalyze the reactions catalyze is nothing but how it really affects or increases or improves the rate of reaction in their catalytic activity enzymes perform two major functions the first function of enzyme is to hold the substrate for chemical reaction active sites of enzymes hold the substrate molecule in a suitable position so that it can be attacked by the reagent effectively i will show you with the help of image the second function of an enzyme is to provide functional groups that will attack the substrate and carry out chemical reactions if you see this image definitely you can understand how exactly the enzyme or drug is going to catalyze the reactions within the human body system or biological system now you can see proteins which perform the role of biological catalyst in the body are called enzymes those which are crucial to communication system in the body are called receptors so this is what enzyme and this is active site this is substrate and this is how enzyme holding substrate so this is how actually the same mechanism we can find in the human system again if you really want to see the what uh, the drug enzyme interaction so this is the enzyme this is the active site this is substrate now enzyme is going to hold the drug and thereby what happens chemical reaction is going to take place and uh, along with that as i told you that some adverse effect or side effects also is going to get occurs when we are taking medicines you may ask why how this is the reason you know if active site is there 
but you know whenever this enzyme or any other substrate is coming attacking to the active site it is not going to attack to this active sites whereas it is going to get attacked to some other place in the enzyme so here by what happens uh, the uh, this drug is going to attack to the other than active site it is going to form as active site with a change shape earlier it was like this and because of the attacking uh, this you know drug to this part which is not really wanted to attack this place and thereby it is going to form as this kind of structure so this is how actually the adverse effect or side effects can be occurred uh, while taking excess amount of medicines so these are the various main reasons or the chemical compounds which are present in the medicines also now definitely we can see the drugs used in mental disorders so these are the various tranquilizers then antidepressants sleep inducing so especially we can see these things sleep inducing uh, the majority of the people they are taking these things especially in metropolitan cities because uh, due to lot of uh, work pressure tension stress anxiety in order to uh, prevent these things uh, people used to take you know tablets that is sleep inducing tablets but at the same time that is very dangerous for human health now let us see tranquilizers what exactly this tranquilizers the chemical substances used to relieve or reduce the stress anxiety leading to calmness are called tranquilizers so these are the one of best example night queen so this is the one tablet we can use it in order to minimize the stress as well as anxiety and this is the side effect headache weight gain and blurring of vision etc this clearly shows that intake of this medicine not good for human health next chemical compound used in tranquilizers that is valium as well as chloradiazepoxide so these are the two chemical compounds which are using in tranquilizers again sedatives these are the various chemical compounds that is urea malonic acid then it becomes as a barbituric acid so this is how the sedative contains these chemical compounds then antidepressants these drugs reduce depression by stimulating the central nervous system so this is the chemical compounds see in medicines also we can find the presence of chemical compounds now if we talk about the daily routine of a man said from morning to till night we can use or we can see or we can appreciate the presence of chemistry chemical compounds chemical reactions in brief in two lines i can explain you that as soon as we wake up in the morning we used to go to bathroom or we'll take the brushing and brushing will be containing as i already told in the previous slide as well as once if we you know get freshing we'll be taking tea or coffee there also our mood will get you know will will be set to the going to the office then once if you are uh, you know wearing uh, dresses again dress will be the various uh, colors of the dresses there also we can find the presence of uh, uh, chemistry of course from home to from office we will be taking vehicles either by cycle or any vehicle that will be containing petrol that petrol also contains what you know uh, chemical compounds as well as chemistry we can find once if we visit the office definitely i am also using right now laptop everybody will be using laptop mobile phones everything so there also we can find the presence of batteries that is chemistry again in the evening uh, we'll do some hard like you know work like jogging something some physical exercise so thereby what happens the dopamine is going to get released from the brain so that uh, makes very very active uh, you know, further things in our uh, daily life so that is also where we can find the presence of chemistry again we'll go for bath once again then we'll sit in front of tv we'll eat our dinner or have dinner there also we can find the chemistry again in order to get can as well as the chemical reactions takes place in so i know this is about uh, you know explain about the fundamental of chemistry or basic chemistry i have explained at the same time i will take another 2 uh, to 3 minutes to explain about uh, the applied chemistry too because as i told you that uh, taking medicine is very dangerous or hazardous for human health but the person should be there to quantification or to 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 quantify or to qualitatively it has to be determined means how much amount one person has to take this medicine or how much amount of the you know particular compound or particular uh, 
things which has to be taken taken by the person this has to be determined right in order to determine those things applied chemistry for example if you talk about applied chemistry i will be giving a best example by taking the human body system only as we all know that human body uh, will be you now containing the biomolecules so biomolecules are nothing but what you know in if you take the example of dna dna consists of adenine and guanine as well as this adenine and guanine if the minimum concentration which is present in our uh, dna means what happens there is a abnormal concentration to what happens various diseases is any chemical bond which is very excess or very low they are going to show their adverse effect in a similar way i am taking best example of adenine and guanine if we find the minimum concentration of adenine and guanine these are the various diseases we can find to the human body system you know we find uh, the alzheimer disease and we can find uh, the diabetes as well as uh, cancer is going to get occur then age related generation is going to get occur then parkinson disease also occurs so these are the various adverse effects caused by the if i want to determine the exact amount of the adenine and guanine how one can proceed to determine these things so this is what actually applied chemistry i am i am speaking about so now in order to determine the adenine and guanine so these are the various methods that is existing methods that is what you know for capillary electrophoresis and liquid chromatography these are the various common used methods to determine these adenine and guanine not only adenine and guanine you take ions and biomolecules etc but these are the methods require you know sophisticated instruments then skilled personnel to operate this instrument as well as difficult for routine use as well as required prolonged sample preparation procedures so these are the some you know potential limitation because of these reasons we cannot use in uh, day to day laboratory works so that's why in order to overcome these limitations or potential drawbacks one more method is there that is electrochemical method what exactly this electrochemical method electrochemical method is the one or a sensor is the one which is very simple and cost effective clean and green selective and sensitive mainly applicable to field analysis means we can take this uh, particular uh, system or setup uh, to the field wherever uh, you know we want to visit in previous methods what happens bring to the laboratory but these electrochemical sensors is not like that we along with this portable sensors we can go to the respective places there itself we can analyze and we can give the results and from detect the very 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 lower concentrations also we can detect that up to femtomolar level so this is the advantage of the electrochemical sensors and this is the schematic representation of electrochemical sensor that is working platform it contains potential sand this is an instrument and this instrument will be contained uh, you know these are the three electrodes counter electrode working electrode reference electrode as soon as if you put the analyte that is uh, adenine and guanine this working electrode is going to get to detect how much amount or what are the analytes which are present in the solution so that will be given by the electrical signals like this so this is oxidation this is reduction so this is the preliminary investigation whether the analyte is present or not we can easily determine by looking into this uh, cyclic voltammetry or cyclic voltammogram and once if we able to understand or uh, the qualitative study is once done we will be going for another technique that is uh, anodic voltammetry means here we are doing the qualitative study and in this technique we are using quantitative study means here what are the chemical components which are present in the solution we can determine from this one and once if you understand what are chemical components how much chemical component is present in the solution we can determine using this anodic stripping voltammetry of course there are other methods also there but i'm giving these few examples so these are the what is the the schematic representation of the electrochemical sensor and uh, these are the like you know for that, that we have to prepare some of the you know here one more thing i left that is working electrode here working electrode we can modify with the various uh, um modifiers like single walled carbon nanotube multi walled carbon nan graphene graphene quantum dots then carbon nano diamonds nano diamonds so these are the various modifiers we can use 
to determine this particular analytes so like that we have synthesized some nanoparticles which later we can we have you know drop casted upon the working electrode and thereby we used for the analysis of target analytes better example i can give ammonium we have taken then ferric nitrate we have taken so from there we have prepared the some iron vanadate nanoparticle we have prepared and finally we, we we found this powder and we have uh, characterized with the various techniques like xrd then tam then ftir like this various uh, characterization process we have taken uh, made the characterization in order to uh, show or in order to explain or in order to what uh, make uh, presence of whether the presence of uh, the particular elements are there or not we have determined using these various techniques again we have used as i told you working electrode <coughs> sorry in working electrode especially we have used screen printed electrodes so why is screen printed electrode this is a cost effective then one shot disposable sensor on site detection good reproducibility low sample less time consuming and apply to a range of different samples how one can prepare this screen printed electrode means these are the various steps first they are going to prepare this uh, uh, carbon substrate then they are going to put it upon the polyvinyl strips then they are going to screen upon the polyvinyl strips then they are going to incubate once if you are incubate uh, various number of n number of you know screen printed electrodes they are going to uh, we can uh, use and this is how actually screen printed electrode looks like here we can use it as counter electrode working electrode as well as reference electrode upon which working electrode we are drop casting that the prepared material that is nanoparticle upon this nanoparticle we are also putting the target analyte that is adenine and guanine once if we put that adenine and guanine it is going to show how much quantity and what are the analytes also present along with the adenine and guanine so this is the working electrode we have been used in the present station and this is the setup how one has to be set up this uh, in the laboratory this is the experimental setup and this is the very starting uh, you know like uh, initial characterization this is what oxidation this is reduction yeah now i can give a best example this is guanine oxidation and this is adenine oxidation here you can find the presence of this is for uh, a guanine and this is for adenine and this is for both guanine as well as adenine as soon as we put into the chemical uh, reaction what happens if adenine is there adenine is going to oxidize and it is going to show its oxidation peak like this if guanine is present it is going to undergo oxidation it is going to show its activity like this so this is the various uh, some uh, fundamental uh, optimization studies we have done this is guanine and this is adenine so this is how actually we have quantified or uh, uh, determined using electrochemical workstation so this is guanine and this is adenine simultaneously we have determined guanine and adenine then some few optimization study in which ph condition uh, we found uh, very good uh, response means in ph7 we found very good uh, response so this is what calibration graph means how much quantity it is present first initially we have kept adenine uh, concentration is constant then we keep on added the guanine so because of the oxidation of the guanine with uh, adding increasing amount of the guanine only guanine uh, presence of guanine we can uh, find over here then we kept the guanine concentration constant then we increase the concentration of adenine so thereby we got this calibration graph then we increase the both the concentration of guanine and adenine so simultaneously the modified electrode has showed this response and we have uh, compared with the previous uh, existing literature reports and we found that uh, the present method that we have produced in our laboratory that is iron vanadate nanoparticle has showed better response uh, compared to all other existing methods and the same thing we have applied to the real samples also like milk and we found that when it is present in the milk sample as well as urine sample by using you know our uh, developed modified sensor and in conclusion i can tell that the proposed method or is a very simple and rapid strategy for the fabrication of nanomaterial 
then simultaneous measurement of target and light and applied to real sample matrices and achieved good recovery. So these are the various things which we have done by using this nanoparticle for the quantification of biomolecules. And the same work has been published in the Wiley publication that is electron analysis. So finally, I would like to acknowledge uh, uh, my department of chemistry, SVM degree college, Ilkal, then Dr. Suma, then Dr. Malappa, then Dr. Ashoka, as well as Professor Craig e. Banks for providing screen printed electrodes. So this is all about my talk about the pure basic chemistry as well as applied chemistry, as well as which is present in chemistry and chemical compounds in our day to day life. So this is all about my today's talk. And uh, now we can say that chemistry is all around us. But the thing is that we need to observe it carefully and notice everything around us. We should appreciate the work of scientists who observed those things and brought it till us. Thank you. Dr. Sandeep, sir. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, now over to you. Yes, thank you so much, Dr. Prashant, for your wonderful you. deliberations. And uh, actually, uh, uh, maybe I am from zoology background, but uh, I did my PhD mm -hmm. in uh, uh, biophysical chemistry. So I can connect whatever you are trying to say, like antioxidants and uh, all these things, that, that, that quenching yeah. carbs. <laughs> That's yeah. really interesting. Yeah, yeah. And indeed, um, uh, actually, our human body is uh, all about chemistry. Chemistry is everywhere. Yes. Whatever we everywhere. are uh, using what, uh, in our daily lifestyle, chemistry is everywhere. We are integral part of it. And uh, exactly. without wasting much time, I uh, I will uh, move on to uh, question and succession. Uh, we, uh, sure. we we are having a few questions. Uh, okay. First one is uh, in your screen that uh, mm -hmm. uh, oh, within few years can we avoid plastic or polythene sir this is from arif hassan definitely definitely we can we can uh, do this one uh, because researchers already started the work in fact uh, including me i have started working upon plastics means instead of using chlorides or chlorides we can use nanoparticles and that definitely can replace the plastics. I can tell you plastics. By taking you know, the paper sheets, we can take normal papers and we can code the hydrophobic uh, platform. We can create the hydrophobic platform. What happens? Paper is not going to, indeed, is not going to get wet. It's going to stay upon the uh, paper and the hydrophobic layer which is present on the paper, it is going to repel the liquid particles which is present in the wear in the water or watery kind of things. So thereby what happens? We can use papers or we can use the degradable things other than plastics. Definitely we can replace or we can minimize the usage of plastics. And now global uh, challenge is there upon reducing or uh, minimizing the using of plastics. Very good question. Definitely we can replace that plastics. Okay. And uh, there is uh, another uh, question. Yes. From sml official i don't know actually what is the name mm -hmm. uh, but uh, mm -hmm. why there is no lithium soap lithium soaps uh, why there yeah, is no lithium see, okay fine fine yeah yeah definitely A very good question and at the same time we should think about chemistry as i told you that if you are taking any of the chemical compounds that should contain both hydrophilic as well as hydrophobic part in lithium we cannot find this hydrophilic as well as hydrophobic part if the the main objective of using soaps or what in order to remove the dirt particles which are present in our human body or any cloths. But that can be done by using particular chemicals uh, where, which contains hydrophilic as well as hydrophobic part. If it is not there, we cannot use that part. Example, in lithium, we cannot find that hydrophilic as well as hydrophobic. Indeed, it is very toxic. So definitely, we cannot use lithium soaps. Very good question. Yeah, fine. And uh, uh, there is uh, one uh, new question from Nirmal Lopal mm -hmm. that okay. 
preservatives and pesticides are bad for our health is there any replacement yeah. or substitutes yeah. of them uh, definitely now scientists are working upon the same but uh, the minimum quantity of preservative as well as but anything as i told in the previous slides that excess amount of anything including our food or preservatives or pesticides are very bad for health and scientists are working upon the same in order to uh, replace these preservatives as well as pesticides yes and yeah. uh, there is uh, one more question from and this is from uh, rahul laha that uh, mm -hmm. sir can you give some new examples of therapeutic drugs which contain metals I think there are many, but uh, please. Yeah, many. Mm, yeah, so, some chemical compounds are there. Uh, say, for example, cobalamine. I can give cobalamine, cyanocobalamine, which contains cobalt as a central metal atom, which we are using in therapeutic drugs. Yeah, this is one example. Cyanocobalamine, I can give. Yes. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, I, I have uh, one question. Prashant, that uh, yeah. um, you have mentioned about aspartame as a uh, you know, which, which is used in sugar-free um, uh, yeah, yeah. goods or sugar-free things. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. what do you think that aspartame is it uh, good for our health or not? Seriously, no. Yes, yes it, 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 uh, people are using. I know, but uh, is it uh, continuous yeah, yeah. use of aspartame is good or not? Not good. It is very dangerous for health. It is going to accumulate yes, yes. in the liver, and liver is going to get destroyed. Once liver get destroyed, yes. everything will be demolished. Yeah, you know very well. Right, right, right. Yes, yes. Yeah. Because uh, uh, liver and kidney, these two things are very important for very. our digestion and excretion process. Yep. And uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, most of the drugs affect those organs. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And uh, there is uh, one question from uh, a member of our biology that is Athri. Uh, very nice. Yeah, that's. Uh, huh. Our question is, uh, how does melatonin and adenosine relate to sleeping? What is the role of caffeine on sleep? Caffeine on sleep. Uh, yes. Yeah, caffeine uh, is the chemical compound. As I told you that you know, our brain contains you know some dopamine as a chemical compound. So what happens if you take such kind of things? Dopamine is going to get released from our brain. Best example I can give. As soon as we do some physical exercise, we feel very relaxed because of the reason, the generation of or the excreting of what the dopamine from brain. When that dopamine or some other chemical compounds which are uh, releasing from our brain, that is going to start traveling from all our neurotransmitters, and thereby we feel ourselves relaxed. So, like this, that caffeine also plays an important role in getting sleep or awakening the process. Yes. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, before the last question, uh, I will uh, request uh, Rupam, Rupam Devnath, uh, to share the feedback link in the chat box. Please, Rupam. And uh, the last question is from uh, Spurti. P, that is, uh, what are limited spectrum antibiotics? Limited spectrum antibiotics. Limited spectrum antibiotic? No, I don't know. Yes, uh, I think uh, from the from the terminology, I guess it is those antibiotics that uh, actually works in limited spectrum. That is uh, not for oh. all type of bacteria like that. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, yeah. okay. From Maybe. my limited knowledge in microbiology, I am. Okay. 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 And, uh, I think uh, uh, another another question from Pitha Guho that okay. there are so many questions coming. Your 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 presentation was so interesting and so simple. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's why so much questions are coming. And this one okay. from Pitha Guho: Why is green tea considered as slimming agent? Oh my goodness! Yeah, because it, uh, it, <laughs> I can tell, I can tell. Okay, no problem. You know that uh, really improves our appetite system. You know that uh, every anything if we consume that has to be get you know digested properly, right? That we can call it as antioxidant. Whatever.
whatever the amount or the content which is present in our stomach as soon as we take this antioxidants it is going to start its reaction is going to start inside our stomach so thereby what happens all the unconsumed or wasted energy they are going to converting into uh, you know useful energy so thereby what happens we feel ourselves very uh, relaxed as well as you know that makes us very keep very active so the uh, green tea is we can call it as antioxidant because of it really makes us of course it is a slimming agent i can tell you it really makes uh, it kills all the waste which is present in the human body that's why yes. doctors as well as everybody has to prefer this uh, uh, green tea and uh, there are uh, but, uh, couple of questions are there and these two questions <clears throat> are going to be last one okay so okay, uh, first one is from mega kumari that uh, sir diabetic person take artificial sugars whatever uh, i just mentioned aspartame instead of sucrose mm -hmm. is there any side okay. effect of that definitely it is there because as i already told uh, this uh, diabetic artificial sugars are 2000 times sweeter than uh, real sucrose right definitely they will be having their side effects but yes, usually I, I, diabetic I, I, patients in, 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 and uh, prashant i i i uh, think in such cases i in diabetic in case of diabetic patients it is better not to take any kind of sugar isn't it exactly exactly you're right we should not take it we should not take it at all yes, yes. whether naturally is only harmful then artificial is so much dangerous only naturally right. itself is dangerous then uh, artificial is very much dangerous so we should not consume that one yes yeah there are uh, so much as uh, a different kinds of sugar free is available in medicine shops uh, yeah. as well but uh, exactly. uh, we will suggest along with yeah. prashant that it is yeah. not um, it is it, it is not uh, uh, recommended Consume. to use those recommended. sugar free yes exactly exactly yeah uh, last question uh, What and one more, thing I, I yeah. I, I, one more thing i i want to tell one more thing yes 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 one more thing sure. that uh, yeah yeah because uh, that person might be confused with oh, exactly the sugar sugar is nothing but what carbon hydrogen as well as oxygen these are the three elements which is should not be present and uh, where we can call it as a sugars and other than these three elements we can take uh, some fibrous contents items foods like uh, uh, pears guava so these are the fruits we can consume because these are the foods containing fiber content other than carbon hydrogen oxygen yeah and uh, the, this is the last question uh, from today's okay. session then what are the potential okay. harms of over over uh, use of sanitizer uh, aerosol can okay. cause huge damage to the lungs yeah sanitizer as we know that which contains alcohols okay the excess amount of alcohol yes. which if you are uh, you know using you, if you are rubbing this alcohols to our hands what happens the proteins or amino acids which are present inside our cell they are going to get start breakage is going to get start breakage we can see the peel off of the skin is going to get occurs so definitely it really over use of sanitizer causes some adverse effects upon the so amino acids they are going to breaks from our skin and thereby peeling off the skin we can easily observe so that is adverse effect yes yes because uh, yeah. uh, uh, i also think that uh, uh, from my point of view geological point of view that the human body secretes lots of uh, oily secretions like sebum and all and uh, okay, fine. yes if these these things uh, get damaged with the over use of those sanitizers that is yeah. alcohol correct. and uh, correct, correct. Uh, skin becomes rough yeah skin becomes rough correct. skin and, becomes uh, rough uh, outermost layer may rupture so uh, yeah uh, use is good but uh, overuse yeah. is too not much. recommended not yes, good too much use too much use of anything is not good <laughs> not good not recommended yeah yeah yes. <laughs> right so uh, that's all from today's uh, session that is national national webinar okay. on chemistry in everyday life thank you so much all the participants Uh, and feedback link is already um, given in the chat box and it will remain open for 2 hours from now so thank you so much thank you so much